welcomes to you all. This is June update. I know, uh, it's, um, I'm sort of on time. The 4th of July. Happy Independence Day, everyone. Yeah, I'm impressed that I'm actually getting my June update done so close to June, because normally around this time of year, uh, not that I disappear or I have a hiatus, I don't do that, but I'm normally spending so much time out in the garden and working that there's never enough time to do this video. But for the first time ever, my June update is sort of on cue, so <laughs> yay me. <laughs> um, it's been a rocky month, so I'm, I'm not gonna lie. There's, there's lots that's happened, mostly unstitch related, um, which is then, yeah. For those that are interested, I'll probably either talk about it along the way or towards the end. Should we just jump straight into the whips? I think that's most important, don't you? Yeah. I sort of stayed on point, I think. I think, personally. It was the plan. We had a plan. Um, June, so for those that know I do the whip go, the Jessie Marie whip go off Facebook. A few of the months this year, I lapsed considerably. So was adamant that I was gonna regenerate that and make that work so for my whip go for june it was two projects it was a hundred stitches on my winter white santa and it was to complete a tree or lantern on evening in the park so needless to say i completed those projects or the requirements for those projects so let me just move some of this stuff out of the way because there's, there's a lot of stuff here. So I have to say, it was a little odd to stitch on something Christmassy in the middle of June. I, I can't lie, it was. So here is the lovely Winter White Center. It's a Mirabilia. And where I've got footage of where you last saw it, you should be seeing it around now. And for the fabrics, I'll put those in the bottom because I never remember. It's still on the frame because it's still been getting a, a few extra touches on. As I got it out, I thought, do you know what? <laughs> I might as well just carry on and do a few more stitches. So this is where we have got to on Winter White Center. So here he is. Um, oh, she says dropping him on the floor. So I'd already start, I'd already done most of him and his face. So I moved over and did this section and some sections here. So that's the bit that I've been working on. It's on an opalescent fabric. Like I said, I'll put the fabric below. I love, I love the fabric with the clouds. The only bit that I don't like on this is, is the actual stitching on this fabric. For some reason or another, the holes are not overly clear, so I tend to struggle. I think that's the main reason that I've spent less time stitching on this one, because, yeah, it's, I, I just really struggle, really struggle on the, on the fabric. But I love the fabric, does that make any sense? I love the way the fabric looks, and I love the opalescence, like the opalescent sparkle of the fabric. I just don't actually like sticking the needle through it because it's, it, it just seems quite dense in places. Don't know why, no apparent reason. <laughs> so that was the first completed task of Whip Go and then the second completed task of Whip Go was my lovely evening in the park. And I know when I last spoke to you that I was gonna try and make focus areas, you know, and finish a corner and do this and do that. I sort of went off on a tangent because I got bored, but then that's not unusual for me, is it? So, my requirement was to complete either a lantern or a tree. I actually went a bit further than that. I'm not going to unravel the whole thing because you've seen this many a time already. Um, but I sort of got into my groove and I completed a load of the lanterns as well as a corner so basically I've done this lantern this lantern this lantern and I think I don't know if I'd last spoke to you I'd done this section but I'd, I'd worked on this corner as well 
so yeah so I'm loving the lanterns loving the lanterns not quite sure how I'm gonna feel about the trees because I I actually like the lanterns more than I like the trees when I'm stitching them so so maybe that's why I went with the lanterns first okay <laughs> but I, you know when it's sort of on these types of projects sometimes you, you, there's so much detail on them and you stitch them for so long that then when you when you stitch on other parts of it so say for instance I was stitching down here or I was stitching over there you do a bit but it doesn't really go wow at you it doesn't it's not like wow I can really see how much of a difference that's made when you do these sections along here like these these lanterns it's like wow it is like really wow so it's like super excited of course I'm not alluded I'm not alluded that there's still a lot to go and there's I think there's, <laughs> I think there's something like 18, 18 more lanterns to go because they go all the way around the outside as well as trees, but 18 more lanterns on this one um, without the rest of the corners. So, so yeah, the more, the more I think about how much is left on this, the, the more I'm like, it's going to take forever still, but yeah. I feel like, I, I, d I don't know why, but I feel much more accomplished now and that I've actually achieved something substantial. I don't know why. It's just odd. It's odd that something as simple as a few little lanterns would make me have that ooh yes feeling. We do like an ooh yes feeling. So that is the lovely evening in the park. So that was what actually created or made it so that I completed my June whip go. Um, July's whip go, we'll talk about when I get through these whips. What else did I work on? So let me just see. So evening in the park got four days this month. Winter white Santa got three days. Um, so the next project that I've been working on was my uh, Story Keep Life is an Open Book. This is a heaven and earth design. Don't have the picture with me, so I will poke that around here. So you should be seeing the picture of what it will look like. This was the one that I started as part of my full coverage for beginners series. I should really do some stitch with me so we can do like a how are you getting on with yours catch up? I'd never did actually do the, the follow up on you, did I? Bad trees up. But I thought once I got you all going and you all sort of understood the concept that it, you know, I, I, there's no point in me keep restitching square by square because it's exactly the same as what you saw in the, on the, the final video anyway. But maybe I could, I should, I think I should just do a stitch with me on my story keep to keep you all up to date on where we're at and how we're doing. So, I can't remember where you last saw this. So about now you should be wearing, seeing where you last saw this. It's, it's getting there. So here we go. You can see there, that's the top of the tower. And I've been working my way down this corner here, I think is what I've been doing. So yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the progress. The light's not very good today, people, I'm sorry. I am trying. <laughs> I am really trying, but it's not, it's not plain today. Maybe if I move it back here, how's that? Is that any better? Let's try that. So yeah, so I've worked down here, which is the corner of the curtain, um, and we've done sort of a, this section here. So, and Story Keep Life is an Open Book Paris got three day stitching so again not massive amounts problem is i like to switch up quite a lot now because you know with the whole lockdown thing and not going dancing i'm tending to stitch more frequently like day after day and after a couple of days i'm like mm, i want to do something else now so I tend to be switching stuff out. So it only stands up, well, three days. I only got three days, but the old way of doing things would be that I would have something on a frame for a week because I wouldn't guarantee that I would touch on it for more than two days in a week. Whereas at the moment, I'm like, it's on there for three days. Whip that off, put something else on, and then stitch something else. So, yeah, 
I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Although the more, the more I'm at home and the more I want to stitch, the more I'm undecided about what I should stitch next because there's just like, oh, I want to do this and oh, I wanted to do that, but then there's never enough time. But then we, we've had that conversation already. You know what I think about how much time we're all getting. Um, what else did I stitch on? So, um, whilst I have been working in my office, because I've got one stand in the living room, one stand in the office, and then my little table stand. So, depending on what I'm doing and where I am will depend on what I'm stitching on and what's on, on those stands all at the same time. So, this month, on my little table stand, I have been working on, this I do have the picture for, she says, my Rosewood Manor Spring Quaker. So, here it is. It's the Spring Quaker with the Valdani threads. They're still not my best friend, I won't lie. <laughs> but whilst I'm sort of on conference calls and various other things, I, I try and sort of tackle a thread or two at a time. So it doesn't really, and again, where there's pictures of where you last saw it, you should be seeing those around now. And this is where I have got to. I put it on a bit of card to see if it would help because this one's always a bit tricky, or well, some of these that I take off, they're, they're always a bit floppy. So, so this is where we've got to. So I think the last time you saw it, I'd done this bit. I think I'd done that bit. I'm not sure I'd completed this. So I've worked this section here. So it's, it's one of the big motifs that goes across the page. So, so yeah, progress. And not sure about the threads still look quite bulky on this fabric, I'll be honest. I don't know if I can show you. It might be a bit difficult for me to show you up close, but... So yeah, um, I still love the fabric. I still love the colours of the fabric and I think it, it's going to work. It's going to work well. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just the threads. I don't, I don't like the threads very much. But it's getting better. This is one of those ones that sort of you start off and you don't actually like, you know, something. And then it sort of grows on you. So it's growing on me. And the fact that I can just do a bit, put it down, or just like slide it off to the side, then do a bit, slide it off to the side. Because this is the one that's on my, um, on my little table stand. So I have it on the desk side next to me and then as and when I go on a call that sort of turns into a, a long call um, I'll just drag it over pull up a thread do a thread or two and then put it away again so so yeah so that one because it's in the office and I just do a thread as and when I'm on a call the Rosewood Manor got five days of stitching so it had five touches in the month so not too bad, not too shabby people, not too shabby. So then also whilst I was in the office, on the other stand, I had another project. So I thought, well, you know, the more stands and projects I've got actually ready and set to go, the more likely I am to stitch on stuff. So I'd sort of set everything up so that that would be the case. And I'm quite pleased that I did because the next project that I worked on was my Castles in the Air. And this one, she says, do we have a picture of it? We do. This is the one that I done, I think I did the stitch with me on this as well. So this is what it will look like. It's a long dog sampler. About now you should be seeing where you last saw it. And this is where I got to. So let's see if the light will play. Or is the light not playing? The light's not playing, is it? You just got to love a bit of light not playing. So let me bring it forward for you. So here it is. Um, I think the last time you saw it was about here. I did a portion of this as part of my stitch with me. So I, I've, I've done a bit more and across the top. 
So yeah, there we go. Light's a bit better now. Absolutely love this. This one is the one that I'm doing with my uh, Silks For You Hank in colorway PR161. I did actually go on Silks For You because on my Stitch With Me video, I did, I did say that obviously I've been given, I've been given the heads up <laughs> from my friends on social media um, that the Long Dog Sampler were doing um, a limited time free um, pandemic chart. Of course, I jumped all over that. Eventually managed to get on the website to, to, to get it, got it and thought, right, okay, I need to find some fabric and some threads so that I've got it ready. Obviously, I've got quite a lot of fabric. So then it was just really the thread. So I thought I'd go to Silks For You. Unfortunately, at the moment, it looks like their site's down. I think um, they're struggling with suppliers for the silk. So, yeah. So I'm waiting for the system to notify me that they're back up and running. So as soon as they're back up and running, then I can I can go purchasing for some more for, for some more silk threads because I do, I'm really loving the experience of working with the silks. I'm loving the silks. So, and that is quite a good segue onto the next project. <laughs> so whilst I was out in Arizona, the lovely Deborah, um, we went through her stash and there, there was a project that she said she was not gonna work on and that she was gonna try and see if anybody else wanted to take it off of her hands. Because when I looked at it, it's something really different. Really different to anything else that I've ever stitched or ever been drawn to. But it did sort of wow me. And the fact that it wowed me, it's sort of, you know, do you know what happens when that happens? When we get wowed by something, even if it is something that we know under normal circumstances we wouldn't be drawn to, if all of a sudden you are drawn to it, there's, you're drawn to it for a reason. And unfortunately, that rabbit hole, I, I went head first. There was, there was no holding back. So, Deborah had the... Um, the 2018 Queen of the May by Hands Across the Sea. It's a bit of a monster, oh, I won't lie. So this, this is the chart. And Deborah had already started this and had got so far on it and then sort of said to herself, you know, I'm never gonna finish it for whatever reason. Don't know if it was the sheer size or that she was bored of it or there was other things that she wanted to stitch on. She had all the threads. I mean, look how well it look. I mean, these are all Avera Schwa um, threads for it, all labeled and, oh, <laughs> I could play with these all day long. Um, so yeah. So, like I say, rabbit hole, I fell down it. I turned around and said to Deborah, do you know what, Deborah, let me take that off you for you. L let, let me help you with that. I, I, I have no problem with taking that off your hands. So I did, and I thought, what better time than now to pull it out and give it a bit of a go. So it's gonna be a bit tricky for me to show you what bit Deborah what bit Deborah did, which is probably mo what it is, most of what I'm about to show you. And I've just sort of picked it up and run with it along the way. And we're just really, really lucky that we both stitch at X's the same way. So it's not like I had to adapt or change how I stitch because some people do their X's, their top X right to left, and others do it left to right. So, so here it is. <laughs> And it's so not like me. It's so not like anything else that I've got or that I've ever stitched. So here, and, and it's gorgeous. So here we go. This is the design um, around the border of which is all satin stitch. So these are all satin stitches. Um, so Deborah had done... She completed this one here um so i've basically i've done this section across here i've done a little bit of the satin stitch across the bottom here to bring this bit over um i've done this bit and then i went down and i've done a 
couple of these little motifs down here. So literally it's just had a little touch. But it is beautiful. She says, let's move the threads out of the way so that you can actually see. Yeah. Here we go. It's going to be one of those projects that, I mean, it is, I mean, it's, it's huge. You can tell by the size of the fabric. Let me, let me back up. This is how big the fabric is versus me. So yeah, it's going to be an absolute monster. And Deborah has made a fabulous start on this. And now all I need to do is try and, <laughs> try and continue that. So, so yeah, so another project that I've, I now have. So that's now added to my whip list because I've actually started actively working on it. And it is on, it is on a linen, which again is very unusual for me because you know my experience of linen with my lovely roses of Provence. <laughs> but this one I've actually, I don't know, maybe, maybe when, I, when I was stitching on roses of Provence, it was my first time ever stitching on um, linen. It was my first lady. There was a lot of first going on. So maybe that was the reason that I was struggling with everything because it was, it was everything that I was struggling with. But now obviously I'm a little bit more experienced. We're a year or so on. I've worked with other threads, other fabrics and other ladies. So, so yeah, may, maybe that's the thing. It's, it is sort of, you, you have your struggles on the first one of everything. So the first time you stitch on even weave, the first time you stitch on linen, the first time you do a lady, the first time you do a full coverage, there's always, there's always, you know, things that you learn along the way, things that you, you know, you like, you don't like. Yeah. So, um, so Kings and Queens, that got three evenings of stitching. So that's it for the whips. But I don't think I did too bad this month, especially considering it's June. It's normally, you know, we have loads going on in June in the garden and, you know, with work and everything else. But because everything else isn't actually happening, it, there was more time for stitching. So I'm quite pleased with how that went. Um, so for Whip Go, uh, like I say, so I completed Whip Go for June. So July's Whip Go has actually worked out to be 100 stitches on Castles in the Sky, or Castles in the Air, which obviously is my pink one. So that's the reason that one needs to go back onto the stand in the office so that I can play with that through the course of the month. And the other one is spend one day stitching on Frosty Forest. Now you know how much I dislike this one because this is like a, the bane of my life. And I'm going to show you where it got to because I don't know if I've got a picture of where you last saw it. If I have, then I'll be showing it to you now. But this is where it got to. I was working on this little house down here. Hold on. Just fold him over. So we'd got that far on that house. And I think I've made the decision that I'm going to do, I'm going to do the next house here. And then I'm going to call it a day on there. I'm not going to stitch anymore. Because I just not, I don't like the, I don't like the fabric, if I'm honest. Yeah, I just don't, it, it doesn't scream at me like I hoped it would. So I think I'm just going to do the other, the other one and then turn this into like a little pillow, I think, a Christmas pillow. Um, and then maybe stitch the other one as little separates and, and make a little, what do they call that, a little quilt blanket if I decide that I'm going to stitch any more of them. Um, so yeah, so I think I'm going to do the next, the next one. So I'll finish this, this, this square, do the next square, turn it into a pillow for Christmas. So that is in my whip go. So I need to at least stitch one day on this. But I think what I'm going to do is switch out the Rosewood Manor Spring Quaker and put this one in for the month. And although I only actually need for my whip go challenge 
to be completed, I only need to stitch on it for one day. I only need one day's worth of stitching. But I am going to see whether I can stitch on this some more and maybe finish this whole square and start the new square. Start the new, the, the final square for this. Because then I would have a finish, wouldn't I? Even though it's not officially finished if I was to do it the way it was supposed to have been done. But hey. I don't know. I might have to see whether it grows on me once I put it into my little my little frock stand that sits on the side and I just stitch a few at a time because that tended to happen with the Rosewood Manor one. The Rosewood Manor Spring Quaker I was really disliking and I, I was actually contemplating just not doing it and calling it a day because I didn't like the threads. Then I put it on that little stand and because I'm only doing a thread here and there and a bit at a time, it started to sort of actually come along and, and then it's sort of growing on me. Does that make any sense? It's really odd, really odd. So I'm rather hoping that, that the Frosty Forest by Little House Needleworks will sort of be the same thing. So it may just be that I finish the, finish the house that I'm on and then do the final house and then call it a day, but you never know. It might inspire me to do more. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it will because there's too many other things that I would really like to stitch on like some of the Cricut collection um, I've done the spring one didn't I I put a picture here for you to see um, I've got the winter and I've got the summer one the charts ready to go so they would be good options I think I need I've got a lot of big projects I think I need some littler projects as well so so yeah, I need to I need to work on sort of what I've got going on. But then if I have too much going on, I start panicking. I'm not panicking, but I'm like, I have to stitch on everything. And it's like even my big projects now. I mean, like this month, you think all the other projects, there's like, is there any heaven? There's apps, other than the one story keep, none of my full coverage heaven and earth designs got touched this month. None. Peacock Sagoon, Mini Red Queen, Red Dragon, Alternative Reality, none. Nothing. So, and that's the thing. And then, I, then I'm like, oh, they're never going to get done if I don't work on them. So, although I'm sitting there saying I'd like some smalls, I think it's because I've been watching so much floss tube. And you're all enabling me. Because I'm, I'm seeing lots of people doing, you know, smalls. And they're getting finishes. And, and they've got little cushions and little pillows. Not that I'm going to be any good at creating them into little cushions and pillows, admittedly. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being drawn in. You're sucking me all in. See, this is what happens when I watch Floss Tube. Talking of sucking in, I have some haul. It's a small amount of haul, people. So don't, you know, don't run away. Go, oh, she's going to show us all these things. Quick, click off. Literally, it's one thing. One thing, and again, totally enabled whilst I was out in Arizona. And I went to the attic and met the lovely ladies at the attic. And was wowed by everything that was in there. So much so that I literally didn't walk out with anything. Apart from one project. But there was another project that was in there that was really screaming at me. And Deborah and Mary were both like, well get it then. And I'm like, oh I don't know. So you know when you're that undecided and I'm like, Oof. It's a lot of money. It was a lot of um, silk threads. So I was like, no no, I need to step away and I need to really think about it and decide for the cost of it, bearing in mind that I love my chatelaines and stuff like that, I was like, is it worth the cost? Am I going to stitch it? I had to have that conversation with myself rather than just go all gung-ho. Well, at the time, I wasn't 100% convinced, <laughs> she says. Although I did love it. And I knew deep down that it was still calling to me and resonating and then I was watching who was I watching there was there was someone on floss tube who does a lot of the samplers and I can't remember for the life of me who it was and the more I was sitting there looking at some of the projects that she'd been working on and the stuff that she had like in the background I was like you know what I'm gonna order it I'm gonna throw caution to the wind so again I'm afraid it's a hands across the sea and this one is Elizabeth Weston. Um, and this is what it will look like, she says, if I can get it to show up. 
if I don't get this to look right on this screen, then I'll, I will put a picture here so you can see it, but I love it. The fabric is like a pinky colored fabric. Of course, I'm wowed by that. There's lots of pinks in there. It's got a very, very pretty little pink, um, I don't know, pavilion looking thing at the bottom. Um, the pink flowers. Yeah, there's lots of pink in there. And, but it's such a beautiful chart and such a beautiful design and the, the history, I'm going to ignore this, what, why is my phone leaping at me? Don't you just love an interruption on the phone? <laughs> it's another dilemma that's going on which I'll explain shortly. So yeah, so I fell down the rabbit hole with, with this lovely chart uh, by Hands Across the Sea and ordered all of the Avera Schwa silks for it, of which, of course, being here in the UK, there wasn't one place that did them all, so I think I had to source all of the threads over, I think, four different places. So I think West End Embroidery, I got some of them from. Patchwork Rabbit did some of the others. A new company that I found, never heard of them before, so for those that are looking for threads in the UK, it's a company called Hobbles. They're in Cumbria. I think they do quilting stuff as well, so they do quilting and they do sort of cross-stitchy stuff, so like an, an embroidery. So they had... Um, they had the threads as well. So I literally had to go sort of sourcing. And again, I got completely screwed, so to speak, because I went to one company and found the silks that I needed. It was like, oh, right, okay. So I clicked on all the ones that I wanted, ordered them, and then was like, right, now I need to go source the others. And then when I went onto another website, the silks were slightly cheaper and then when I went on the third website it was like the silks were with that company were even cheaper still but obviously by the time I'd got to the one that was the cheapest to have got them I only actually needed like three different silks and I was just like really so the bulk of them I sort of paid a lot more money for than I needed to but then I don't know by the time you add postage and packing and so yeah I mean and I was like well you know I obviously wanted the threads that much that I wasn't gonna go you know sourcing Sourcing the best cost price first, so therefore, you know, it's your own stupid fault, Teresa. So yeah, so I have also ordered the fabric. And would you believe it if I tell you that for this project, bearing in mind that my lovely Roses of Provence, I'll put a picture here, you know the pains, the pain that I went through with the fabric, the fact that it was a linen, um, and with the whole stitch in her, well, I've only gone and bought the same fabric. So it is the same, I think it was called Tudor Rose. Tudor, Ro Tudor Rose colorway, a linen by pole stitches. And because when I've looked at the colors of the fabric versus the colors of the threads, I think this sampler will look fabulous on it. So yeah, but it was very big. And it was very expensive and I'm still waiting for it so it hasn't turned up yet so can't start this until the fabric turns up um, but yeah can't wait to get started on this I think this is gonna be this is gonna be one of those I love this I think hold me to that do me a favor six months a year's time when I'm going oh I can't stand this fabric ah oh, it's not working <laughs> remind me of this day remind me of this day people <laughs> <laughs> so that is it for the whips that is it for my little bit of haul that I purchased um, what else to tell you um, oh huge huge thank you to the lovely Cindy so I've been watching some of Cindy's um, videos Cindy I think she commented on one of mine and I was sort of saying about the whole you know how you doing how you coping in lockdown um, and obviously I said to her I was doing my yoga. She gave me a little tip because I'm, I'm like, I can't do running and you know, the whole going out for a walk. And she was like, oh, she said, I've been doing this video. 
Um, and I think it's called Walk with Leslie on YouTube. Um, and she said, I do that. She said, it's really, really good. So I'm like, hmm. She said, like, you don't have to leave your house. You know, you, you walk in your living room. Well, because I put Walk with Leslie on. I'll put the link here for you because do you know what? It's been a game changer. So on days where I ha physically do not have time to get up, go for a, I don't know, a 40 minute or 45 minute walk outside and then quickly get ready for work and then do work and then do my yoga in the evening. Now I can either use my lunch break or if it's raining, I can do it here. Or if I just want a quick 10 or 15 minutes. So literally in, in 30 minutes of standing in my living room, I can walk three miles. Just doing this, this walk with Leslie. And they've got all different types. You've got 10 minutes, a 10 minute walk, which I think is about a mile. Um, you, or you've got um, a 15 minutes, or you've got 20 minutes, or you've got 30 minutes, or you've got 45 minutes. Some have got extra bits in for people that are a little bit more advanced, but predominantly most of it is just anything, you know, just move your furniture a little bit. You don't need a particularly big space. Oh, come on, I live in England. We have small houses here. Um, you don't need a, a big open space. As long as you've got like a little square area that you can do it in, you can do it. And it's been a game changer for me. So my walking has gone up. My level of exercise has slightly gone up. Um, and even when it's raining, which obviously in the UK we have that problem, or for those if it's too hot outside, this is a perfect option. Perfect option. You can just do it all stood in your living room. <laughs> so Cindy, thank you so, so much for sharing that with me. I know it wasn't stitching related, but that's what made it even better because it was just, yeah. If you hadn't have told me about that, I would either be in soaked outside every time it rained um, or not doing any exercise. So huge, huge thank you for sharing. So like I said, June was a bit of a tricky month. Mum's birthday was on the 22nd of June. That didn't really go according to plan. So mum was 75 on the 22nd of June. So happy birthday, mummy. Um, but we didn't get to celebrate on the 22nd of June because unfortunately my mum fell ill and ended up in hospital, which was its own ordeal given that it was COVID. It made it extremely difficult. We spent most of the afternoon and all of the evening up there. Um, I did eventually get to stay with her um, in the hospital while she was being looked after because obviously the cognitive problems mum wasn't quite you know she can't understand necessarily what they're saying which in the beginning wasn't an easy thing to get into the hospital with her because they were being very very careful with security um, which obviously was then just breaking my heart because I'm like I can't, I can't she can't go in there on her own she cannot go in there on her own you know, she's going to get all confused. She's not going to know what anyone's saying to her, which means they're not going to be able to treat her right. So thankfully, security on the door were very understanding. As soon as mum got whisked into triage, the security let me in to go into triage so I could talk to her. And then triage was the one that actually said that I could stay with my mum, given my mum's previous history. So we was there basically most, well, almost all of the afternoon and all evening Mum got kept in. The frightening bit was that they actually thought that there was a possibility either she'd had another stroke, was having another stroke, or potentially was imminently about to have another stroke. It was one of the three and they couldn't quite work out what, um, and that was what they was trying to rule out. So it was, it was all very distressing and panicky. I, w I was panicking, there's no two ways around it. I was like, here we go again. Luckily for me, the following day, um, it got confirmed that she wasn't having a stroke and actually it was that her potassium levels had fell through the floor. So they put her on IV potassium, they kept her in for another day because obviously it's, it's very, I, I didn't realise, but it's extremely dangerous um, if your potassium le levels either go too high or too low. Um, it's actually life-threatening, so, so yeah. So mum's potassium had fell through the floor. They think they they think it was to do with one of her one of her blood pressure tablets. Which strikes me as a bit odd because she's been on that for ten years. So you know if that was a problem, but maybe her body change maybe her body's changing now. You know, and it's the same as anything. You know, I suppose it's a bit like allergies. Some people can eat certain foods for ages and then all of a sudden have an intolerance to a food. So. It may be something like that. So they took her off one of the blood pressure tablets. I'm pleased to say that 
I think she got released from hospital on the... So she went in on, I think, the Monday. She got released on the Wednesday. So once she was let out, she was super good, super fine. She looked amazing. She seems fine now. There doesn't seem to be any adverse effects. She was very tired when she first came out of hospital, but literally within sides of, of a day, she sort of bounced back. So we had a birthday on the 25th of June, a surprise barbecue in the garden um, with my brother and the kids, which was, oh, she was elated. She was over the moon. She said it was the best birthday she's ever had. So, so yeah, so it made up for the fact that the, the actual birthday on the 22nd was a total disaster. Um, but needless to say, because of that, the whole that whole week basically you might as well just wiped out because I was I was good I was no good to man or beast because I was too busy worrying about my mum. And then this last week I think Yeah, I I I think I'm just trying to I was just trying to sort of, you know, stop myself from worrying. It's like nothing to worry about, she's fine, and just bring myself back down to where I need to be on my nice even kill. So yeah, so the back end of June made it so that all most of my stitching and most of what I've shown you actually got done. Um, the first three weeks of, of June and the, the last sort of week and a bit was a, yeah sort of a bit of a wipeout. Um, but pleased to say mummy is doing fabulously she's bounced back great you know she's it's as if it was never a big deal so we're monitoring her now so we're monitoring her blood pressure we're monitoring her potassium um, which we'll get blood tests for over the next few months just to make sure that you know all is well um, so yes, yeah, so mummy's doing fine now, but yeah, again, you know, life, life is life, isn't it? It's got peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs. Of course the camera dies, always does, don't know where I got to, so maybe that's, that's cue, that's cue for we're done for the day. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't really done that much in the garden, I'm fighting the slugs off like you wouldn't believe. My dahlias have got special collars around them. They're like little plastic collars that you sink into the ground and they, they're sort of got a lip on them that go that way. The idea is to stop the slugs from being able to get in. They're a deterrent and they are stopping the mass destruction. But I went out there this morning and I have to say I was truly heartbroken when I went to one of my dahlias that was doing okay and found three slugs in there with it, eating it. So I was a bit like, really boys? Obviously that wasn't much of a deterrent for you, was it? So, so yeah, the, the, but the collars are working. They're, they're detracting most of the slugs, but my dahlias are really not doing very well this year. You know, I'd love to have done like a summer garden, you know, display video tour, you know, to show you all my lovely flowers. And this year, I don't even think I'm gonna have any lovely flowers because they can't get out of the ground. Well, they're out of the ground, but they're about yay big. That's as big as I've got them. And every single time I've gone out there after it's rained through the night, they're gone again because the slugs have just annihilated them. So the garden wars continue. So Teresa versus the slugs. So far, slugs are winning, hands down. So, fingers crossed that over the next month or so, I don't know, the dahlias just romp away and get bigger than, than the slugs can eat. So, because that's where we're at at the moment. They just don't seem to be get off the ground before the slugs kill them again. But on a happier note, happy 4th of July, people. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed hanging out with me and you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the little subscribe button, give me a thumbs up to let me know you like it. And until next time, people, bye bye for now.